Hey guys, Scott from Aristocob.com here. And Seth from TheShrinkingPastor.com. Together, the three of us, we are Mark with Men's Breakfast Club. Welcome. Good Welcome morning. To another uh, session, another meeting of the Markwood Men's Breakfast Club. It is still cold. In fact, before coming over here, uh, stopped and got some beverage, got some pop, and um, set it on the roof of the car. And I was gonna, I was getting ready to reach into the trunk to grab something, and I looked up, and it was sliding full force <laughs> at me. Um, the the top the, in the time that I had gone in to, to get some food and come back out, the top of the car had frosted over, and set it up there, and it just, I mean, it was like it was full on sprinting towards me. I don't know how I managed to catch it, but I did, <sighs> good, good and job. and I caught it. You 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 have those moments. Where you can see what's going to happen, and then thankfully it doesn't. You right. know, so in my mind, I saw grabbing it and the lid coming off, and the whole <laughs> thing just exploding all over me. And thank goodness that didn't happen. But needless to say, it's chilly. Yeah, it is. It's forty degrees in the shop with it with an electric heater on blowing on us right now. Yeah. So what are we gonna smoke? Uh, <laughs> We're that gonna, thing. We're going to smoke Milan's Christmas Blend or is 20, it 2012. This is from Brother Boontar. Milan's is a, uh, 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 you know, uh, it's, it's a pipe shop up in Roanoke, Virginia. Now, I'm going to be smoking this in a Missouri Marisham Legend. And, you know, I've, I've made uh, no secret of the fact that I smoke pipes that I call out of my inventory that I consider... Not quite the best. Now, I don't buy seconds from Missouri Marisham. And every now and then, I get a pipe that I think should have been sorted out by mm. them. And here's here's why. Take a look at this. It's a nice, beautiful cob. I see the problem. It has a filter. Can you? Well, that's true. <laughs> but you can see here, it's got a big old nasty filling with uh, plaster of Paris mm. on there that didn't get sanded off. Uh, is it going to affect the way this smokes? Nope, nope. Not at all. Will it affect the life of this pipe? Nope. Not at all. But um, I just didn't want to send that to somebody. Fair enough. So away goes the filter. I'm feeling fancy tonight. Today. Oh, this morning. You? Whatever Which time it? it is. I'm tired. Uh, but I'm still feeling fancy. So I'm going to be smoking my Oh, your briar, your briar cigar. Alright. Haven't enjoyed this puppy in a while. I'm going to enjoy it tonight. So, Briar Cigar, those are, those are made by Chris Morgan. Yes, they are. Beautiful pipe. Yes, it is. Interesting pipe. Yes, it is. I'm not going to use the weed slicer for this one. <laughs> yeah, we don't need to do for the, that. For this tobacco. I hope not. Again, we learned that the only reason to chop up your tobacco is if you're, you're smoking a flake in that oppressed tobacco. Or if it's weed. <laughs> You want to get the get the pollen out of your weed, I suppose. So what is this we're smoking again? Blend twenty twelve. Christmas twenty twelve, and um, Milan's good. from Roanoke. Have you been there? No. Not the Roanoke, but to the pipe shop. No. It's a neat old place. It looks to me almost in like it Roanoke? used to in Roanoke. No. It's in the old downtown area where there's lots of uh, walking foot traffic. They do uh, a market right there in, in kind of the square, mm -hmm. so it's a, a farmer's market. It is in the shadow of the Hotel Roanoke, which is a beautiful old building that is uh, a Tudor style. Google it. It's also by their uh, railroad museum, and it's a neat, neat place. It reminds me of an old jewelry store, real tall ceilings, glass uh, display cabinets, lots of pipes and tobacco on display, and they blend... A number of their own blends there. That's cool. That's something I would like to try my hand at. I know it's as easy as just taking a little bit of that. It's easy. You heard me. I know it's not easy. But I know it's just, you take some of this, some of that, mix it together, put on some special sauce. <laughs> rub special it, rub sauce it just does it all, right? Rub, rub it down with some bacon. Looking at you, Vermont meat candy. <laughs> So, you've had some uh, monumental things going on in your life here recently. Yeah, I started a new job. Yeah. Pardon me while I light my cigar. 
Now, we live in High Point. Boy lives about, I don't know, the way the crow flies, maybe a quarter mile from us. And his new job is over in Winston-Salem. Winston-Salem is, I don't know, 20 miles I'm on the other so. side of Winston-Salem from us. So it's a 35-minute drive. Well, but there's no, there is no, you can't get anywhere in North Carolina directly. It just, it's silly. North Carolina doesn't believe in straight lines. No. Back in Ohio, you want to go somewhere, there's a straight line there, and if there's some problem with that, you get off the highway and you get on a service road or the next farm road that runs parallel. It's all, it's not really laid out as a grid. It just happens to be a grid. It's pretty gridular. Here, the roads were laid out by the cows, just like they were in New England. <laughs> You know, is it, and I think like the cows that work at Chick Fil A, they're out there with their surveying stuff. And uh, now, I mean, there's one way to everything, and if there's a problem with that one way, well, you're out of luck. Or if you happen to be located in a spot that isn't that direct shot, you're going to have to go well. So anyway, I go had to do that today. West. Uh, today, they they a apparently one of the overpass signs on uh, Highway mm-hmm. 40 fell. Oh, yeah. And so traffic was backed up for quite a ways, um, and that that happened, of course, right as right as I'm getting ready to leave work, and I had some place I had to be. I had to get home within an hour window. Um, when did this happen? This morning? A day. Yes. Shut up. I think we've already established what this is. So. Continue. On my way from, so, did you take it as a home sign? from work yesterday. Um, no. Uh, so I I ended up having to come um, regular 40, or business 40, which took me, this is the road I should have taken, took me way up over here, down here. And <laughs> it, it, it added an extra 10 or 15 minutes to my commute. I mean, business 40 isn't like going through... You know, a, lot, a lot of business routes take you through downtown, and it, it's a small road, and there's traffic lights and all that. It's not that. It does take you through downtown Winston-Salem, but there's a lot of on and off at that point. Lots of intersections yeah. that are, you know, people coming onto the highway and leaving the highway. So just slower. Yeah, 40, the, the new 40 um, is a pretty recent kind of bypass of the city, and so it's... Uh, it's nice. It's it's nice when it's not down, not shut down, because uh, that's the route that you, you normally take. And so it's thirty five minutes or so to work, which is a big difference. Um, you go up three eleven. Yes. So you go south on yeah. sixty eight towards downtown High Point, and then you go northwest north on three eleven. On three eleven, and then you catch 40. forty, and you go west. Mm-hmm. There's no direct route mm-hmm. anywhere. I'm telling you. No. Excuse me, and so. So, you know, that, it's it's a bit of a difference. You know, my old job was about eight minutes away. And right now, um, I have a Ford Expedition, uh, four-wheel drive all the time. So, it gets about 11 miles to the gallon. And I am driving, I'm driving, gosh, like 65 or 70 miles round trip. Mm. No. Uh, uh, yeah, about 60, yeah. about 60, 60 miles round trip a day. You're picking up your son. About every, th- I'm not, but about every three days, um, I'm hitting 170 miles. So it's it's adding up very quick. Mm-hmm. Um, it's getting yeah, very at least expensive. gas is, is, is less it's, expensive right. than it's been. Yeah, so it's, but it's, it's one of the situations that working under the assumption that this is going to be a, a good job and a long-term job, um, uh, we're looking into the possibility of getting a new car. I'm trading mine now. Uh, and there's more cause to do that. Um, I know some guys that can hook you up. Do you? I'm looking at you, Tobacco Frank. You got a car hookup? Okay. Um, <clears throat> somebody's got the shifty eyes. And so, so yesterday... Let me back up. A couple of months ago... Um, on the way to the Nashville Pipe Show. I had made it a few hours, or I had made it to Winston-Salem, actually, so about 30 minutes outside of, of home on the way there, and my car started leaking some uh, radiator fluid into the floorboard of the the passenger side, 
turned out I had a heater core blow, which is a $50 part <laughs> that requires about 10 hours of taking the entire dashboard apart to get to it. And so it ends up being about $1,500 when all said and done to get that replaced. So those of you that were in Nashville knew that because I ended up not getting to Nashville until about 3 a.m. when my my estimated time of arrival was about 7. Um, and we really got to, got to know uh, Mr. Harlow, mm-hmm. man with a plan. Because he said, oh, yeah, here, of course, those are bitch. You don't want to have to deal with one of those on the road. I said, thank you for that wisdom. And it's true. It was, it was a, a pain. Um, I, was told, I was told by a friend, oh, yeah, you could bypass that. But to do that, you're going to have to cut these two cords. And those two cords are 150 bucks a piece, proprietary from Ford. So cords? Bef- yeah, they're hoses. hoses? Sorry. Okay. Yeah, so before you, even, before you even get to the repair, you're going to pay $300 to replace those hoses if you do that. It's like, mm, no thanks. And so, um, to me, so dealt with that. Um, I had a friend do the repair. Well, it was he's not a mechanic. He's just a buddy who's mechanically inclined. And um, so he he did the heater core repair, had my car for about two weeks, but probably between he and his dad working on it, about 100 hours oh, into gosh. getting this thing replaced. This, again, $50 tiny little part. And did that. But, you know, as happens with some of those things, you get tired of looking at it. You know, if you've been looking at it for too long. And so you, you, getting the car back together, not everything got back together <laughs> the same way it was before. Um, and so I've been kind of harassing him about that. He said, look, I just wanted to get it back to you. I'll go back. I'll fix these other things. But I knew that you needed your car. The uh, fact that right, your headlights flash when you open the glass that's compartment. Right. That's on so, you. So the air conditioner doesn't work. The heater. <laughs> so it's got rear heating, rear AC. Not working. At, it's not even registering. Not working at all. Um, there's some rattling. I mean, just all sorts of things. So I'm harassing him about this. So anyway, soon after we got it back, one morning Allison went out to start up the car. And it smelled a bit of an electrical smoke smell and so she shut it off i didn't touch the car at all i was afraid to to mess with it and about a week later i went back out to it started up not a problem so a couple weeks go by then the smell happens again i'm like this is weird again kind of leave it go back a few days later not a problem and so smell like like a spark is it no the I mean, ozone it, smell it, or is yeah, it yeah it's it's like the insulation on a wire kind of a kind of burning plastic yeah, burning right. yeah right. just that nasty very toxic smell <laughs> and so uh i am hmm. it's one of those it's around the time that your your your, your language started your 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 lisp kicked in you slur try to slur in your words yeah that's right <laughs> that's right and, and my twitch um and so we I I decided I have to drive my car and with all of the work that had been done taking the entire dashboard out there's no telling what the problem could be and it's one of those situations that if it's not actively happening how do you tell somebody how do you tell a mechanic what it is every now and then I smell this that's right and and so the diagnostic would be a fortune just for them to figure out mm-hmm. what the problem is if they could figure it out so my philosophy was I would just drive it until it happens again, and when it happens again, I'll just drive it straight to the shop and leave it running and let them let them see it happening. So last night um, it it happened. It started happening. So I am I am two blocks, three blocks from home, and I am in the inside turn lane, two turn lane area, heading, heading for home, heading for home, and. So I'm boxed in. There are cars on all sides of me. And all of a sudden I smell the, the, the electric, burning electric smell. And I look down and I can actually see visibly smoke coming up from underneath my dashboard. Wow. And the last time I had done this, the last time it happened, I, I, when I smelled it, I checked under my hood. It wasn't there. So I was confident it was something electrical happening under, under my dash. So I see smoke just pouring out now. Wow. Allison has pulled up her car because we were driving two separate cars is beside me and I roll down my window and tell her uh, something's not right. And um, and then... Something has released the smoke from this. That's right. I, I start moving stuff away. So I'm kind of leaning down, moving things away because I've got some some like uh, grocery bags. My jacket was down there in the area. I'm afraid that there's going to be a fire. 
And sure enough, uh, fire starts <laughs> inside of my center console of my car. So I'm looking is down at night? my feet. It's night, this so is night seeing, time. Okay. This is this is ten o'clock nice, last night. Nice warm glow oh, yes. from the dashboard. <laughs> so I've got this thick black smoke, and there's um, red flickering light coming <laughs> by my feet. Oh man! And I can see on the other side. And I can see on the other side. It's getting significant. I said, uh, my car is on fire. And I'm still sitting there at the light, you know, just waiting. <laughs> I'm look, my car is on fire. She said, what? She said, uh, do I need to go home and get the fire extinguisher? Extinguisher? I'm not sure. I don't know how extensive this is. I'm not going to, I didn't, I didn't want to get out of my car at that point because there's not really anything that I could do. Um, and so. <laughs> well, you could get out of the car. It wasn't, so. It was clearly something... I could tell that it was something electrical. It's inside my center console, near my feet. It's it's isolated right in there. So it wasn't... Had my car really caught flame, I would have. I would have gone out. I mean, there it was a tiny fire at that point. And so I drove to... About a block away a block, from where yeah. I was is a, a car care place. By the time I got there, the fire had gone out. But... There was a legitimate. Oh, so you're good I then. I could have no roasted. I could have roasted some marshmallows in my car. It was a legitimate fire. And so I get down and look, and sure enough, I can see um, something has melted. Um, some mm. of the plastic has bubbled because it's melted so bad. And um, so it turns out it's a. There were two parts that were bad, and the the biggest part is like a switch that works with um, controlling the flow of your heat. Okay. And. It's it's got a a pin on it that's supposed to free float, and when that gets locked up, the gears inside of this little gearbox that's supposed to control that they keep trying to run and they can't, and so they overheat, and that's where the fire started. So it started because there was too much heat in there because it had seized up. So they actually gave me the part. Wow. So you can see. Oh, and look, it's, the whole thing is discolored from smoke from inside of it. From fire? Yeah. Oh, my gosh, So, son. I don't know if there were shorts here. And you can see that the plastic along the, um, Golly. the edge is totally melted. And so, he said, this piece here you are so lucky. should free float, and it doesn't. It doesn't spin at all. Hmm. Okay, I think I see the problem. Yeah, <laughs> the fiery bits. Yeah. So they fixed it. <clears throat> oh my god. They replaced it. Unfortunately, it's another one of those fixes that takes six hours to do. So I about three hundred dollars in parts ended up being six hours of labor, so about a thousand a little over a thousand dollars to fix. Oh this time god. I had the professionals do it. Um, it. because I need my car. I have a job that's now thirty five minutes away and my wife still has her job. We can't carpool anymore. I leave the house at 6.45 now to get to my job site real early, or earlier than she's even getting up mm. um, to start her day. And so uh, that's a, uh, it just had to be done. The good news is after getting that fixed, apparently that thing has also been preventing um, my rear AC or rear heat from working. So my rear heat is now working and my AC is working. So, two things that I thought had been broken are now working. So, I don't know if those also were being prevented from that thing just not running properly. Mm. Or if something else entirely just reset it. But uh, I am glad that those things are working too. And hopefully, I won't die in a fiery blaze. Dang. Wow. I'm glad that that ended as well as it did. That could have been bad. Oh, I know. I mean, I was ready to abandon ship. But, <sighs> if you're looking, it's like, wow. Well, um, we got one more thing to talk about today, and uh, glad that that ended well. So, a year or so ago, uh, we were driving back from Ohio and stopped at a, uh, a rest stop, and in the rest stop, they were selling these. Okay, Coca-Cola. Interesting thing about this, though, it is made of aluminum. Aluminium for our European friends. Yeah. And uh, it spawned a conversation in the car about, well, what is this? Is it a bottle or is it a can? What do you say? Do you have an opinion? 
I think... I think it's a bottle. All right, boy thinks it's a bottle. I think it's a can. I think it's being argumentative. Because it's, cause it's aluminum. And yes, it does have the bottle shape and it has a bottle cap. But it's a can because it's made of aluminum. So wait, this, wait, wait, this wait, wait, conversation... Wait. What? What? Do we have time for this? I don't know. I don't think so. <laughs> so this conversation carried on the whole trip back. I think we stopped in like West Virginia. And the trip back to Ohio with my daughter and my son in the car went on and on and on. So for Christmas, I happened to be, uh, uh, just before Christmas, I was in Cincinnati. We stopped at um, Jungle Gyms, which is a, just an awesome grocery store. And as, uh, as I'm wandering around there, I found something that I thought would get the conversation going again. What is that? <laughs> so, uh, what is that, boy? Clearly that's a can. <laughs> so is that a bottle or is that a can? I mean, look, it's got a bottom that looks like a two-liter bottle. It's got, it's a, got label that's, a label that's too. peeling off of it. That's totally impractical. And it's got a pop top on it. I guess we'll leave you. We'll leave this with you. Is this a bottle or is this a can? Is this a bottle or is this a can? What know, me, makes a bottle a bottle? What makes a can a let me, can? Let me inspect inspect this closer. Definitely, definitely a bottle. <laughs> Actually, I might I might concede and call this a can because it has that can. nasty <laughs> that nasty aluminum flavor that you can only get with a can. Yep. Oh, I wonder what this one tastes like. Pineapple flavor. Where is this from? Singapore. No. Yes. And, and it's no. aerated water. Yes. No. Singapore. Pineapple flavor, aerated water. You should so try is, it. Try it for the people at home. So this is this is going to be carbonated, mint gas. That's why it's got to have a can lid. Wow, that's uh, try that. You want to try this one? Nah, I know what Coke tastes like. But do you know what it tastes like out of a bottle can? <laughs> I don't have any interest in tasting it out of a bottle. Oh, this does not smell Taste good. it. Taste it. Do it. I regret that immediately. Oh. Remember that... Uh, I'm going to be burping that remember, up all night. Me remember that sports drink you made me drink the other day? That <laughs> energy drink? Monster. That's the one. The baby powder of beverages. Oh, that's gross. Why did you do that to me? <laughs> I liked it. Good, you can have it. Oh, carbonated pineapple water. <laughs> oh. Well, so I think that's it for this one, guys. Thanks for watching. <laughs> we appreciate your time. Make it a great week. Bye, guys.